The Tennessee Titans have a tough choice to make in the first round of the NFL Draft. We're going to go over the pros and the cons of all the top options on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Roland. Titans fans, today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. We're going to look at the Titans' top options in the first round. Malik Neighbors, Joe Alt, Roma Dunze, a trade down. I'm going to go over the pros and the cons of each path available. Before I dive into it, do want to thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed to the number one Tennessee Titans podcast in the world. Throw a thumbs up on the video if you're watching on YouTube. Shout out to my everydayers out there tuning in Monday through Friday. Couldn't do it without you guys. Tomorrow, we will kick off the 2024 Locked on Titans NFL Draft Preview Series with the offensive tackles. And paired with that, I will be dropping a Tic Tac Titans film breakdown on the top four offensive tackles in the NFL draft and why they would be a good fit for the Tennessee Titans. So make sure that you check that out, dropping at 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning over on the Tic Tac Titans film channel. So with that being said, though, we got to talk about Malik Neighbors because the Tennessee Titans will have a top 30 visit with Malik Neighbors. That means they're going to pay for his transportation. They're going to bring him to Nashville to meet with him. And this is the third meeting that the Tennessee Titans have had with Malik Neighbors. They talked with him at the Combine. They had a private dinner with him during his pro day, or after his pro day, I guess, before after the pro day experience. And now they're bringing him to Nashville for another meeting. You could take this a couple of different ways. Number one, the Tennessee Titans are very interested in Malik Neighbors. They want to spend as much time as possible with him because he's somebody who they really, really want. But on the flip side of that, you could look at that and say, Maybe the Titans are nervous about Malik Neighbors and they want to spend as much time as possible with him because they just aren't certain. And the reality is during these pre-draft visits or when these pre-draft visits happen before the draft actually takes place, a lot of people take it as, oh, they're interested in that player. And of course, they're not going to have a visit with a player if they don't have any interest. But a lot of time these visits are because they have a medical concern. They have a character concern, and the team doesn't feel comfortable with the player as they are, and they want to meet with the player more to iron at it, iron that out. That's not always the case. Sometimes it is truly, hey, we're just interested. We want to be with this guy. We want to talk to this guy even more. But sometimes excessive meetings or meetings in general can be an identifier that the team has concern and they need to work through those concerns numerous times. So I've heard both examples from scouts, from team people in interviews throughout my experience here covering the Tennessee Titans, not just with the Titans, but other teams as well. So you could take that one or two ways. And that's a great way to dive into the pros and cons discussion with Malik Neighbors. So why would this be a great idea for the Tennessee Titans to take Malik Neighbors at number seven? Number one, of course, as I keep pointing out, Calvin Ridley is going to be 30 soon. DeAndre Hopkins is going to be 32 and is on the last year of his contract. Those are not long-term options. While I'm very excited about both of those guys, the Titans don't have a long-term answer at wide receiver on the roster. Sorry, you're not going to have me call Traylon Burks that. So you get Malik Neighbors, who fits the timeline of a Will Levis, is a long-term option. And now Will Levis has a partner for the next decade. Not only that, but Malik Neighbors would fit perfectly within the Tennessee Titans offense. You can use Calvin Ridley as your Z wide receiver outside. You can use DeAndre Hopkins as your X wide receiver outside. And then you let Malik Neighbors play in the slot. He played a ton in the slot during college. Now, I think that Malik Neighbors can play outside. I think that he's in that Calvin Ridley uh, role where if he's playing outside, he's in the Z role. And you look, Brian Callahan would use... Malik Neighbors 
just like Jamar Chase. So we know that Calvin Ridley is going to be used in that role, but having two guys, an older guy and a younger guy who can both play that role and kind of flip back and forth between slot and Z would be excellent for the Titans in the short term and the long term. You look at those three wide receivers, Malik Neighbors, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley. I mean, you're talking about a top five wide receiver group in the NFL. And for me to be saying that a year removed from what we had last year, it, it's just kind of crazy to think about. So I understand that fit right there. You look at Neighbors. He is the most explosive player in the NFL draft. He is a yards after catch dynamo. I mean, where you look at Marvin Harrison Jr. and you look at Roma Dunze, they aren't really yards after catch guys. That is what Malik Neighbors does exceptionally well. So he gets separation. He's yards after catch. He's explosive. Again, it would be a great fit. And while Calvin Ridley can be the short-term Jamar Chase, now you have your Jamar Chase long term. Is Malik Neighbors Jamar Chase? We'll we'll see. But there are some comparisons there, and there are some similarities there. Now, on the flip side, and we're saying some people think Malik Neighbors is the best prospect in the draft. Period. So I would be fine with the Titans taking Malik Neighbors, and you could see why that would be such a good fit and be so appealing to the Tennessee Titans. But on the flip side. You have to acknowledge the reality here. I think it's a bit overblown. But when Malik Neighbors was asked in a social media video about going to the Titans or the Falcons, he said, oof, I guess Atlanta would be all right. Now, I think it's silly to overblow that. Players are going to get drafted where they get drafted. And they're going to take the money and they're going to play. But... If you're looking at the cons and you're looking at some of the concerns, it would be fair to say, does Malik Neighbors want to be in Tennessee? Is it smart to draft someone who may not sign a second contract because he simply doesn't want to be there? It's just not a place where he wants to live. Now, you all get to pick where you work. You get to pick where you live. NFL draftees do not. So it would be fair. You know, as someone who's a Titans fan who covers the Titans, I would hate for that to be the case. But it would be fair to say, hey, this guy just does not want to live here, does not want to raise his family here, does not want to work in this city. That's his prerogative. I think it's overblown. I would not be worried about that whatsoever. But again, we're looking at the pros and the cons. And if you're being honest, that is going to be a con, something that would at least be worth mentioning. The other thing here is, We're starting to get reports that there are some off-field concerns with Malik Neighbors. Tony Pauline reported that some teams are worried about some off-field concerns. A guy who some people are worried that he doesn't want to play in one of the smaller markets. He only wants to be in one of the bigger cities. Maybe he likes to have a little bit of excessive fun, stuff like that. So you wonder, is more going to come out? Is this, and of course, you have to acknowledge the reality. This could be a team just trying to drive Malik Neighbors down the board. It could be the Titans, if we're being honest. So, like, those things do happen before the draft. We're in silly season with the NFL draft where there's nothing else to talk about. We've watched the tape. We've discussed the rankings. Now it's just time to do the draft. And in that boredom, some people start to make a mountain mountain out of a molehill. You know what I mean? Like, we never worried about Malik Neighbors' off-field concerns in college, the last three months of draft prep, none of that. But now, all of a sudden, we don't have anything else to discuss. You know, that stuff pops up. So you always take it with a grain of salt, but also sometimes it comes out after the player's drafted or during draft weekend, like, hey, this is a specific event. This is a specific mistake that this player made that generated those off-field concern rumors. So it is something to keep in mind, but again, looking at the pros and the cons, way more pros for Malik Neighbors than cons. I would be very comfortable with taking him at number seven. Let's talk about Joe Alt, though. Before we do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What would you do if you had more time during the day? Would you go for a run? Would you take a nap? Would you read a book? Would you watch more film? A lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more time. The question is, for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? Therapy can help you find what matters to you most so you can do more of it. I've worked with BetterHelp. It was incredibly um, easy to do, convenient. And, you know, if you're thinking about starting therapy, I encourage you to give BetterHelp a try as well. It's entirely online. Again, like I said, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. 
Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month today. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Titans fans, let's continue today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. We're looking at the pros and the cons of the top options for the Titans at number seven. We started with Malik Neighbors. We talked about the explosiveness, the type of player that he is, how he fits with the Titans. Also, maybe some off-field concerns. Does he want to be a Titan? Ultimately, I would be perfectly fine and very happy to have Malik Neighbors on the Titans. But now we got to talk about Joe Alt, who, as all of you know, and my everydayers most certainly know, is my top option for the Titans at number seven. Before we do, though, thank you again for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. As a reminder, my offensive tackle breakdown on the Tic Tac Titans film channel will be out 8 a.m. on Monday. I'll try to put a link to that down below in the description or on Tuesday, I should say. It's Monday right now. So uh, on Tuesday morning, 8 a.m., Tic Tac Titans film channel on YouTube. You can check out some uh, some excellent film on the top four offensive tackles in the NFL draft. But with that, be- and tomorrow we're going to do our offensive tackle breakdown. I'm going to go over like 20 different offensive tackles with you guys tomorrow. But talking about Joe Alt specifically here, the pros are obvious. The Titans need a left tackle desperately. Right now, if we're honest with ourselves, right now, the Tennessee Titans have the worst offensive tackle situation in the entire NFL. Like, even teams with bad offensive tackle situations have made additions. All right? This is the worst group of offensive tackles in the NFL as things are currently constituted. So the Tennessee Titans really need to do this. They need to find a way to get an offensive tackle early in the draft, whether it be the first round or the second round. And of course, I would like to play it safe and just take Joe Alt. Now, he is the cleanest offensive tackle of all all the prospects that we're going to talk about in terms of consistency, technique, what you mistakes on tape like he he knows his assignment he accomplishes his exi- his assignment you look at fashionu small hands the punch you look at latham tight hips does he move his feet you look at mims the injury concerns you look at fuaga is he a guard does he have the quick to be on the outside in the nfl all of these guys have big issues well with joe alt i mean again He's the cleanest offensive tackle prospect in the draft. Now, we may not have the high-end potential of a Fashanu or a Mims or a Latham, but he's a guy you're going to be able to plug in into your left tackle spot and have a starter for a decade. Like You just know it. There is, there's just very minimal risk. He is the safe pick, all right? And Brian Callahan has talked this offseason about what they look for in offensive tackles, and length was a big Thing. And Joe Alt, obviously, at six foot eight and some change with long arms, checks all those boxes. He is a prototypical size for the left tackle. You looked at top, uh, yesterday, my everyday as well. Remember, we looked at Brian or Bill Callahan's history with offensive linemen who have gotten to all pro status or gotten to Pro Bowl status. And what, seven out of 10 were first round picks. And five out of 10, four out of 10 were high first round picks in the top half of the first round. So again, Bill Callahan may be one of the best offensive line coaches of all time, but it's not like he's been taking third, fourth, fifth, sixth rounders and turning them into studs his entire NFL career. He's taking top-tier offensive line talent and getting the absolute best out of them. It's about getting them to their potential. You can't take, you know, Andre Dillard. There's a reason the Titans cut Andre Dillard. Bill Callahan isn't taking Andre Dillard and making him a pro bowler. That's not what this is. So with Joe Alt, you know that you have somebody who his floor is going to be a solid starter and his ceiling under Brian Callahan could be a top 10, top five offensive tackle, left tackle in the entire NFL. So that all makes sense. And let, let me say this too. If the Titans pass on Joe Alt, 
and they either trade back and get a different left tackle or offensive tackle, or they take a wide receiver in the early rounds and then they take uh, offensive tackles later in the draft. Name one offensive tackle, free agency or the draft, who you're truly comfortable with starting at left tackle day one. You could make the arguments for some veteran free agents, I guess, maybe an Andrews Pete, maybe you want to try Mekhi Becton, but in the draft, who are you comfortable with starting at left tackle from day one for the Tennessee Titans to protect Will Levis's blind side? The only answer for me, the only answer is Joe Alt. That is the only real answer to me that I feel really, truly comfortable starting at right tackle from, or left tackle from day one and saying, okay, we're good. Everybody else I would be worried about. Either you're moving Latham or Mims from right tackle over to left tackle. I don't know if that's going to work right away. That might take some time to bake. Uh, Fashionu, is he going to be able to run block? Is he going to be able with his small hands and his poor punch to be able to deal with NFL offensive linemen until he cleans up his technique? I, I don't know if that's going to happen right away. But with Joe all I feel comfortable that right away from day one, from the number one moment that he's the left tackle for the Tennessee Titans, they have a starter, they're good to go. Now, I'm going to be honest, there are some cons here as well. Again, there's more potential in an Olu Fashionu. There's more potential in a J.C. Latham. Definitely more potential in our Marius Mims. Mims is like insane potential, boom bust, like played eight starts, 800 snaps in college, but moves as good as Fashionu and has the length of Joe all like he's got it all, but there's major concerns there that would keep him off my board. So all doesn't have the highest potential ever. He's more of a Jake Matthews, Colton Miller, Taylor Lewan, I think is a good comparison for Joe all. So can he be Trent Williams? Uh, can he be Laramie Tunsil? I don't know. I don't know if he can get that high, you know? But right now, again, I think the Titans need to be safe and just take the guy they know they can trust for a decade. That's where they're at, at offensive tackle. Joe Alt doesn't win with power like Latham or Mims. Like, he's not bullying guys in that way. He plays with technique, and he plays with length, and he plays with athleticism. And it's just a different way of playing. Again, a bunch of people bring up Greg, Greg Cassell's critiques, but he basically just told you, what I just said about how Joe Alt wins. So to me, it's not a critique of this guy's not as good as people think. It's a preference thing. It's I prefer vanilla to chocolate or vanilla to Rocky Road. or It's it's a flavor of the week type thing where sounds like Greg Cassell prefers the more powerful driving offensive tackles to the guys who win with athleticism. It's not a knock, according to Brandon Thorne, one of the best offensive line gurus in the entire world. It's just a different way of playing. So... Depending on what you want, that could be a con if the Titans wanted a bigger, more powerful, or stronger, more powerful guy. Um, also, Joe Alt could be too tall. Is he going to be able to get down? Think about a Harold Landry at six foot two and a half as a speed rusher. Is Alt going to be able to get down there? He doesn't use his hands independently right now. There's some technique work that needs to happen there. He was a former quarterback, a former tight end, has only played offensive line for a little while. People look at that as, hey, he can get better, but also. Is he ever going to, you know, that could limit his upside because he just doesn't have that experience. And it's a very, very deep offensive line class. So if that is true, then maybe it's better to pass on offensive tackle early because it's closer than maybe some people think. So a lot of things to consider with Joe Alt. Again, I'm trying to cover the pros and the cons here, but you guys know I'm the leader of the Alt call. If he's there at seven, just take Joe Alt and have your left tackle for the next decade. But let's talk about Roma Dunze and a trade down as options in the first round. Before we do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to buy tickets. All right. Think about all of the features that you are going to get with Game Time. Number one, they have killer. Last-minute deals, their zone deals, their flash deals give you great prices on last-minute tickets where you get great discounts. They also have all-in prices. If you're like me, you go on these uh, ticket sites, and they tell you one price for a ticket, and then you go to check out, and it's way more expensive. You're not going to have that on game time. Also, they give you an accurate view from your seat, so you actually know what you're going to be looking at when you sit down, and they have their lowest price guarantee, the game time. Guarantee, where if you find tickets in the same row and section for less, 
Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Whether it's sports, theater, comedy, music, doesn't matter. You'll find it on Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code Locked On NFL. L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. We've talked about Malik Neighbors, the pros and cons of taking him at seven. We just talked about Joe Alt, the pros and cons of taking him at seven. Now I want to talk about Roma Dunze, who we spoke about yesterday, and talk about trade down options. I'm going to put those together as things the Titans could do at number seven. Before we dive into it again, thank you for making Locked On Titans your first listen each and every day. Another reminder, I know I'm hitting you guys over the head with it, but want to make sure everyone knows my film breakdown of the top offensive tackle prospects in the NFL draft will hit 8 a.m. on Tuesday on the Tic Tac Titans film breakdown channel. And I will pair that with tomorrow's episode of Locked On Titans where we break down the offensive tackle draft class. I'll talk the top options, the midday options, the late round options for the Titans. And with it being such a good offensive tackle class, very excited to dive into a bunch of names with you guys. But um, now we got to talk Roma Dunze. And I talked about him yesterday. And I'll quickly go through this because we talked Malik Neighbors as well. Looking at wide receiver, I explained the DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley situation. I explained having a long-term partner. I think Roma Dunze, um, you could look at Odunze and say that he would be better outside, maybe not as good in the slot as Malik Neighbors, but I think he has the versatility to move around. But long-term, whereas Malik Neighbors is more of a Z-wide receiver, more of a slot-wide receiver that the Titans would move around, Romo Dunze can be that long-term X receiver. And while DeAndre Hopkins has the ability to be the X receiver, and I think that's the plan for the Titans right now, DeAndre Hopkins really struggled against press coverage last year. And uh, it would be maybe better help for Hopkins to get him off the line of scrimmage a little bit more. And if you look at Roma Dunze as the X wide receiver, Calvin Ridley is the Z wide receiver. And then you have DeAndre Hopkins as your big slot as your Tyler Boyd in the Cincinnati offense. That might be a better fit for everybody rather than Hopkins at X, Ridley at Z and neighbors in the slot. It may be a better fit with those three guys in terms of how things slot out because you put DeAndre Hopkins in a more advantageous situation. So that makes sense. And look, Roma Dunze is not the yak guy, yards after catch. Roma Dunze is nowhere near as explosive as Malik Neighbors. But he's still a very good athlete. He's a well-rounded player. And we just talked about some off-field concerns. Does Malik Neighbors want to be in Tennessee? Would he like to live in Nashville? All of that. You don't got to worry about that with Roma Dunze. Roma Dunze is a high a high football character guy. Like he is a football guy to the max. He loves playing football. He's not as concerned with the stardom and all that. He's just a guy who loves football. I had somebody uh describe Roma Dunze as a teacher's pet from his interviews at the combine. I never saw anything like that to confirm that, but if that's true, why is that a knock? Why is that a bad thing? I, I want guys who are overly dedicated, who are listening to their coaches, who want to do exactly what their coaches are asking for. Okay? Look, wide receivers tend to be divas, but I'm not going to freak out if he's not. Look at Larry Fitzgerald. And I'm not saying Roma Dunze is Larry Fitzgerald, but I've heard some people say that could be a ceiling, you know? So I, I, I just, I think these are all great things for Roma Dunze. And like I explained yesterday, for me, and I've been consistent this whole draft process. All, then neighbors, then Adunze. I would do all of that before I would trade back for the Titans. But, again, you do got to look at the cons. Like I was just saying, you miss that explosiveness of a Malik Neighbors with Roma Dunze. You don't have the yards after catch. If you want to argue that Malik Neighbors is a better fit with the other two wide receivers, I would hear that as well. So, I understand the downsides to Roma Dunze, but, you know, the the pros are there too, not just the cons. So, 
Those are my top three options for the Titans. And then, of course, you have trading back. And I've talked about this a lot. I do not want the Titans to trade back. Look, the pros are obvious. You pick up more draft capital. If the Titans could get a future first-round pick in next year's draft, that would be crazy. Some people are like, get a third-round pick. You better get more than a third-round pick if you're dropping back from 7 to 11 to 14. A third-round pick is not good enough to drop that many spots because you're going to miss out on all these top prospects and you're going to move into the second tier of offensive tackles, in my opinion, with Fashionu, with Latham, with Fuaga. All right. Now I've come around to the idea of trading back and getting JC Latham, but at the end of the day, all neighbors, Adunze, are just so much higher on my priority list that I'm not going to act like I'm I want them to trade down. Definitely not. It's just I won't be as angry if they do it based on what I've seen on Latham's tape. And I'll go over that in the offensive tackle film breakdown that comes out tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, Tic Tac Titans YouTube channel. So, the pros of a trade down, like I just said, you pick up additional draft capital. You can hit more needs. You can fill out a roster that really needs help. Deep offensive tackle and wide receiver class, so it gives you the ability to hit those positions again. Also, I'm really high on Joe Alt. I think Joe Alt is way better than the other offensive tackles. But what if that's not true? What if the Titans don't believe that? What if Bill Callahan thinks J.C. Latham or Fashionu are better than Joe Alt? Well, then if you're the Titans, the pro is, hey, we're going to drop back in the, in the draft, get more draft capital, and get our number one offensive tackle anyways. So I understand that if that is the sentiment inside the building, then those are the major pros of trading back. But the cons here, you're passing up on the top talent. All neighbors, Adunze, you're not getting any of those guys if you drop back to number 11. Then you're taking Brian Thomas Jr., you're taking Fashionu with the small hands, Latham with the tight hips, Mims with the injury history, you know, Fuaga with the position versatility questions. Can he play offensive tackle in the NFL? You know, you're, it's more risky, in my opinion, to drop back. Uh, also, you just suffered a bad season. And you did it with the reward of getting a top-tier prospect. Well, rather than taking an A player, now you're trading back and looking for two Bs. You know, say they get 11 and 23. Now you're taking two Bs instead of one A. And I would rather have the one A. So those are the pros and the cons of all the likely decisions that the Titans can make. To me, it's either one of those three guys or a trade back. Let me know down below what you prefer, how you would rank those options. But again, tomorrow, the beginning of 2024, Locked on Titans NFL Draft Preview Series. We're talking offensive tackles. Can't wait. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland. This was Locked on Titans.